Continuing now with part two of the flying bird tutorial in Maya 3D. The next thing we want to do is to create and attach a couple of legs to this bird. And we need to begin doing that with another primitive shape. So first of all, let's select this entire bird. And as a matter of fact, let's combine that now as one object uh, because uh, as of now the eyes are not part of it so shift select or you can drag a selection box around the whole thing go to mesh and then select combine and you can see that now the whole thing is one object and while we're at it um, let's also delete the history so you go to edit and then delete by type and then history it frees up some of the memory in your computer so that uh, it's not hanging on to all that and slowing down your process so let's do another little preview of the smooth and let's undo that by pressing one okay so let's get started on making some legs for this let's move this back because we're going to create this primitive and it's going to come in at the origin and we don't want the bird to be in the way so go to the create menu go to polygon primitives and then go to the option box for the sphere and you can see it defaults to 20 axis divisions and height divisions we want to start off with less because of the way we're going to model this so enter four into both of those and then click create and there it is now the reason why I want only four is because we're going to model some feet down here and you're gonna have claws coming out from the bottom here so let's take this down and we want to size it so that it's close to the right size for the bird and then we're going to hide the bird so let's bring the bird back now that that's out of the way and let's position it and size it relative to the bird so we're going to start modeling it for one side and then we're going to copy it and attach it to the other side as well let's scale this down this way and this way in the X and the Z directions a little more this birds gotta have skinny legs that's looking pretty good and let's see how that is relative to the birds body let's move it up a little closer because we're going to attach it right about there actually right about there and we need to match up with the other polygon that we're attaching to okay now before we hide the bird I want to get this a little bit closer in size to it let's move the bird over a little bit now and let's start shaping this leg some more right click on it and choose vertex just select this section here and we're going to scale that out so it more closely matches the size of the polygons that we're attaching to and let's go this way a little bit more so this area will be the thigh and then we're going down to the leg and then the feet first let's rotate this about 45 degrees so that the shape 
in this in the direction of this polygon will more closely match the polygon that we're going to attach it to so in the rotate Y in the channel box type in 45 degrees and let's take a look at that good and now let's right click on it go into vertex mode let's select those vertices and we're going to scale them out to more closely match the position and size of the polygons that we're going to attach it to so Another thing we can do is just grab this edge. Since we rotated it, the orientation has changed, so it would be more accurate to move two vertices at a time. And then we're just roughly approximating this, eyeballing it at this point. All right, now we need to get rid of these polygons here. So right click on it. Let's go into the face and we're going to delete these faces in that pyramid on top just select them all make sure that that's all you that's selected is just the top there and hit delete okay so go back into shaded mode and let's also go back into the object mode and you can see that's good all right so since we're very close to the size now, um, we can hide the bird and then just go on in sculpting our bird leg. Just select the bird, go into display, and down to hide, and then hide selection. All right. Now it can help if you have an actual model to look at, and I've got this little blue bird and you can see the thigh is up here it's hidden pretty much by feathers but it's there so we're gonna try to emulate that somewhat but mostly what we're going to be doing is the legs and something similar and again this is a cartoon bird so we're not gonna try to that's my excuse we're not gonna try to do too much accuracy in this alright so my first sense is that we need to skinny up these legs some more so press F to bring it full and now we got a good look at it okay so I think that we should um, start shaping it by uh, just going into the vertex mode and then we'll rough it out so right click vertex mode and select just that row of vertices let's go into the wireframe mode and let's move these up and move it back this way to give that sense of the thigh going back a little bit and then this is the joint area let's scale it down in size so scale and from the center scale it all the way scale it down quite a bit because the these bird legs need to be pretty skinny and let's also give it a little rotation so E and since the orientation has changed because of our turning it you can also rotate by just going over the surface and rotating it kind of in world space like that so you don't have to always mouse over or select the the hoops that go around it so you can see we've got you can also do it from the outside one but I think we got a pretty good idea here that looks pretty good maybe a little bit less back that's good okay now let's go down to the bottom here and let's extrude out some feet first of all let's grab that tip of that inverted pyramid and 
let's bring it up and let's go into the face mode and we're going to start doing a little some extrusions so it's going to have claws and we need to extrude these out separately so let's do the front one first and go into edit mesh click on extrude and let's rotate this around so we can see it a little better and let's just pull it straight out about that far good and let's scale it in a little bit we're gonna start the tapering here to shape it and we want to keep the, the size in perspective so we got an idea how long this claw should be that's good I think we can scale it in a little bit more let's give it a little movement up this way and let's extrude it again and since the extrude was our last tool we can just press G and then extrude again now be careful that you don't press G twice or extrude twice because you'll end up with uh, some extrusions that you don't realize are there and that'll mess you up so only press G once or go into the tool and, and click on it once at each time alright so we got that second one let's scale it down and let's extrude it one more time G pull it out and let's scale it down to a tip to a sharp claw and click off of it so that's okay for we might want to shape it a little bit more but that's pretty good something I should have done a little bit earlier is uh, we want to save this as a second iteration of our flying bird so let's do that now let's go to file save scene as and we're going to call this flying bird 2 because we don't want to save over Flying Bird 1. And if you check your folder, if it's proper, properly set in your project window, there you'll see Flying Bird 1 and 2. If it doesn't go in there, then you need to set your project again. Let's go ahead and extrude the rest of the claws. Got that one. Let's go back to here and extrude. and let's extrude it out in that direction we'll try to do it uh, very similar to what we did with the other one so we want to scale it in adding that little taper on there and then we want to rotate it a little bit so let's rotate it in this way like you did with the other one extrude again and I think we'll just let it go straight out rather than curve it let's scale it in and extrude one more time and scale it down to a point all right, let's do that again with this side. Extrude. We just kind of need to get it at an angle so we can see pretty well what we're doing with it. And again, we're just eyeballing it to scale it in. rotate it extrude 
scale, extrude, and scale down to a point. And we'll do the last one, extrude, and this one I'm going to just make it a little bit different from the front ones. Have it more go out more towards the back. Extruding, scaling, extruding, scaling down to a point. Okay. Now let's go into the shaded mode, click off of it, and take a look at it. Not too bad. And let's go back into the object mode. And let's see what it looks like smoothed, just for grins. Not bad. So the claws will be down, uh, kind of hanging loose because uh, he's flying or she's flying. I haven't really decided what gender it is. And press 1 to get out of that smooth. Before we attach it to the body of the bird, we want to copy it. So uh, the best way to copy is to press Command and D. And that duplicates it, D for duplicate. And then the one we just made is the one that's there. We just move it over. Now we'll bring the body back in and attach these to the body. So let's go into display and we're going to show last hidden. There it is. Let's move it. Move each of them into position fairly close to where they'll be. I have to say that looks exactly like the bird. Kidding. All right. So what we are going to do is decide which of these polygons we're going to attach it to. I'm going to say probably should attach them right about to this this one here. Kind of a good middle ground. All right, so Let's go into the faces mode and select this one and we want to delete it. And same on the other side. Select it and delete it. So I want to get this leg as close to that position as I can before attaching. At least on the inside area without overlapping too much. We can even rotate it a little bit. All right, that's pretty close. Let's see from this side. Yeah, let's go in a little bit further and then maybe down a little bit just so we can eyeball it easier. Let's go into the edge mode and let's bring this edge up close to the other edge. So you want both of these in the object mode now and let's get the other one in position Two. 
pretty close. And let's go into the edge mode. And let's move this edge up a little closer. And vertex mode. Move that even a little closer there. All right, good enough for now. Now we want to combine the legs with the body, just like we did with the eyes. So let's go into the object mode and select all three pieces and go to a mesh and combine. Okay. Now we can use the merge tool for the vertices to merge it into one piece visually as well. It, it's all one, but we need to merge them visually. Right click, go to vertex, and we're going to merge all the vertices that are together here. So shift select, you got both of them, then go to edit mesh and merge, and that brings them together. But again, in order to use that merge tool, merging the vertices or edges, you have to combine them into one object. And let's do the same now with this one. Shift select. Now I could draw a little selection box around both of those vertices, but I don't want to accidentally select something in the background. Now we want to do the same thing we just did, edit mesh and merge. That brings those together. And repeating here, I need to go into the wireframe mode so we can see what we're doing here. This one, let's move that down a little closer. And then we have this one. And merge. I pressed G there because uh, that merge was the last tool again. Okay, and then we have our last one right here. So we select that. And uh, what I'm doing here is when I'm in a tool, like a move tool, in order to select the other one, you have to go to Q or s click off of it and then select and then G. And now we have them all combined. So the way to test that is just click on it separately without doing a selection box or shift select and then you can check and see yes indeed they are all combined I do like to double check to make sure even though I did get the positive feedback from the status so that is now attached so we need to do the same on the other side so let's do that here. A little quicker this time, since you already know how to do it. I'm going to go inside here and select that. Bring it up a little closer, then shift select the other one, and then merge, and then back here to this one, move it a little more closer into position. This all gets a lot faster when you get used to working in three dimensions, and they're all attached. Okay, so now I have the, the legs. The model is pretty complete, as simple as it is. Pressing 3 and smoothing it. Take a look at it. Let's go into the object mode and click off of it. And now let's take it up above the grid. So it's easier to see from the side. We don't have the grid getting in the way. Pretty good. So actually when a bird flies, the 
feet kind of trail behind. This is more like uh, when we start out like this on a rock or on a perch. And just as he's taking off, we can't get really complicated enough. Uh, having his wings fold back would be too complicated really for this tutorial because it involves a lot of folding and, and morphing. Um, so anyhow, that's just a little preview of the way we're going with this. Compared to our bluebird, his claws are pretty short. And so we could we could make him longer, but uh, again, he is a cartoon. I'm going to do that just a little bit, I think, to make him a little more convincing. Let's go back into the regular mode, pressing 1. And let's try scaling it up in the length direction. That looks pretty good. I think we can move these downward a little bit, even out the length on them. Pull this out a little bit too. Let's do the same with the other side. That's good. A little bit longer is better. The feet uh, are not quite even. So let's just grab here, go into the side view, and move those forward a little bit. And, and grab these as well. And move the whole thing forward so it's per almost perfectly even. Doesn't have to be perfectly even. All right. So now we want to add the skeleton. Let's go into the top view. Take a look at it. Now with a skeleton, you need to start off in an orthographic view. It, if you try to do it in perspective, it doesn't know where to go with it. So let's go into the object mode and your select tool Q and let's change to the rigging mode go up into the skeleton menu down to create joints alright now normally in a biped you'll start at the base of the spine and, and work your way out from there down the legs up the spine and then out to the arms and the head and we'll do it somewhat similar to that for the bird and we'll start here because that's between the legs and we want to go down the legs and um, then also up and into the wings so that's the first one that'll be the base joint like the base of the spine and then you can see it's not where it needs to be so we'll go into the side view and move it up okay now let's go from the front view and we're going to continue with our skeleton tool. Click on that and then we'll go to here to create like a hip joint. Click once then click again here at the knee joint and then once more down at what would be an ankle and then hit enter. Alright, let's take a look at it from different angles. That looks pretty good for now. We're going to be positioning them afterwards. And let's go back into the front view and back into the tool, back into the joint tool. Press G. Click on that first one. Make sure you get right at the center. And then go to the mirror side of the other one for the hip, then the knee and then down to the ankle and hit enter. You always have to hit enter at the end of each chain of joints. 
Now let's go up to the top and press G, hit that center one. And the next one will go to here. And we're going to go out along the wingspan now. So let's go first, it will be like a shoulder joint here and then all the way out to the tip. Enter, G, click here, then we need a shoulder, and then all the way out to the tip. Now you can make sure that they're all connected by clicking off and then clicking at the base one and you want to always go back and forth and kind of look, make sure that everything's in position. All right, now let's do the head. We can do that from the top again. G, click here, and let's click for our neck bone. And then we'll go all the way out to the end of the beak. Now we don't need to have this be very complex, so He's not going to do a whole lot of stuff with his head. And then we can finish this off by going to the tail. So G, click here at the base, and click here at the beginning of the tail, and then out at the end of the tail, and enter. All right, now we've got the whole skeleton as we're going to use it. Now we just need to position them so that they correspond to the body. So whichever view works best for us. Let's position this knee back to cl more closely correspond with the model. And so when you move it back like that, you can see um, the other parts of the joint and the bone move with it. And then arrow down to go to the next joint, or you can arrow up to go up to higher joints in the tree and then bring this forward. And we'll do the same on the other side too. Arrow down and then bring it forward. That's pretty good. Now we want to do something similar with the wings and the shoulder. Let's select those. In fact, we can do both of them at the same time. Shift select and then we want go into the shaded mode and we want to raise them up so that they correspond with the shoulder there and then select the outer ones shift select take them down a little bit the tail looks just about right but we also want to adjust the neck and the head so the neck looks fine we'll just go down to the beak and bring that down to the proper position. Now if for some reason um, your joints and bones aren't big enough or don't show up very well, you can go into preferences and change the size. So let's do that. Go into Windows, Settings, Preferences, Preferences, and then Kinematics. You have joint size. so. You can make them bigger or smaller, depending on your preference. And we don't have any inverse kinematics on this one, so we can leave those alone then. Uh, I like the size right about there. Okay. All right. Yeah, we could add IKs in inverse kinematics to these legs here, but we're not going to animate him that much, so it's not really worth it. Uh, that just complicates things when he flies around. So we're just going to leave them and just animate him uh, a little bit when he first takes off and to swing him back as he flies, and that'll be just by rotating the joints. So let's take another look at it uh, in the smooth preview mode. And that's looking pretty decent. I 
think I want to move these joints a little bit since they, they don't look like they're right in the right position. So I like to have them just right at the tip so we have maximum control and what's called uh, influence or weights because each of these joints influence the body when you when you skin it to the bone. So the next step in this and the last thing we'll do in part two is we will bind the skin of the bird to the skeleton. It is getting a little busy in here. I, I could shift select the base like that but really the best way to do it is to have your outliner open. So let's go to Windows outliner and then we can more easily select the parts that we want in the outliner. Now you notice that there are different trees here uh, and it's also called parenting so anything that's underneath each of these in this tree is parented to or is the child of the one right above it so we need to rename all these so the first joint we call the base you double click on it and then just type in base all right, and the next one, as you select it, you'll see that's where it is, and that's what it is. We call this hip. Uh, I like to say what it is first, and then whether it's the left or right. So let's call this hip underscore left, or L for left, enter. And then the next one is called knee, knee underscore left, and then ankle underscore left so it would be the the same on the opposite sides as well so we've got hip underscore right knee underscore right ankle underscore right let's call this clavicle clavicle then the next one would be shoulder left wing left shoulder right wing right neck and beak. Tail underscore one and tail underscore two. All right, so we got them all named and we can uh, leave that open. If we need to select any of those, we can just go through and select whatever we need. And now let's bind the skin to the skeleton. So go ahead and you can select it here. And let's rename this bird for the model. Let's get rid of our history. So go into edit and delete by type history. And you can see that gets rid of those other materials that we had from previous work. And we just have the one bird now. So uh, in, in binding the skin, you need to first select the skin and then you select the skeleton. Shift select, or you can just click and drag and select them both. Then make sure you're in the rigging menu and then go to skin and bind skin. And now the skin is bound. So when you select the skeleton, let's go into the shaded mode here. the body goes with it in whatever direction you go okay so at this point we're going to stop in this part two in part three we'll work on coloring the bird as well as working on skin weights and don't forget to save as a matter of fact why don't we go ahead right now and save seen as and we'll create a third iteration flying bird 2 let's 
change that to Flying Bird 3 and we'll be all set for the next tutorial.